Hello, and welcome to Finding Respect in the Chaos on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm so glad to be back. I've been out for a little while, and I, and I missed being here. I missed being able to bring everybody these important, important resources that, that everyone needs. And today, I am happy to report that I'm here with Julie Dugan. Julie, welcome. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for coming. It's so nice to have you here. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, now, you were here about a year ago, a little yeah. over a year ago now. And I know there's some exciting things happening with Job Corps, and that's why I wanted you to come back and sort of share some of these amazing things. But first, what I'd like you to do is give us a little, a little recap of sort of, of how you got involved in Job Corps and what brought you to that job. Sure. Well, actually, I was a brand new to Hawaii. I had worked in the vocational rehabilitation field with disabled adults in the career training industry for many years. I came to Hawaii and the opportunity came up at Job Corps, and I thought, well, that sounds interesting. Let me give it a go. And Cynthia, that was 29 years ago. Wow, awesome. Yes. And you're doing such a great job, too. That is so great that you've been doing that this long, because I think that that kind of continuity is important to keep the programs sort of consistent, because that's kind of the way people can learn to trust and count on them. Right? Exactly. Exactly. So I've been the, the face of Job Corps for, for many years. And such a beautiful face, too. <laughs> That's so wonderful. Wow. Okay, so if you had to pick one thing that was your favorite part of your job, what would it be? Just the, the fabulous students and staff over, over the years. I mm -hmm. feel uh, blessed, privileged to find a career that, you know, has a purpose. Um, I believe in the mission, and it sounds right. a little bit corny, but... I love going to work and, and, and supporting people's uh, missions. I don't think that sounds corny at all. I think it sounds beautiful. Yeah. I love that. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody, when they went to work, could feel that way about their jobs? Because yeah. then I think that we'd really raise the level of happiness and you know, contentedness in people. Because if they really like, you know, your job is three quarters of your life. If you don't like your job. Shoot, that's a big chunk of your life to not be happy with. So Job Corps kind of helps people decide and discover what would be a good job for them. What is something they would like to do and enjoy doing later on, right? Give Correct. us a little background sure. so on Job Corps. A, a little history. Well, number one, we're the, uh, the nation's career, premier career and technical training program. Wow. It's a well-established program. Right. It's been around since 1964. Wow. Yeah. It was part of President Lyndon B. Johnson's War on Poverty. That's amazing. Wait, wow, that's yes. interesting. So other programs uh, besides Job Corps that are still in existence is um, Head Start, the community right. health centers. Okay, and, and Head Start, that's the little kids, right? The that's child the little care. ones, yeah. Correct. Um, community health centers, adult basic education, so the adult schools. You know, so we're a well-established program. Right. You know, we're not a fly-by-night career training program. We've been around for, for many, many years. Um, we have full support. We're operated by the Department of Labor. Oh, wow. Okay. So our taxpayers, our tax dollars hard at work. Right. So we do have congressional support across on both sides of the aisle. Um, it's an expensive program to operate because it's sure. a residential program. So we have two beautiful campuses that I'll share more about later. Now, when you say, I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah. when you say residential, you mean the kids come and, and actually live there they while can, they're going through they the They can training. live on campus or they can commute. They oh, have the okay. option. The majority of our students live there. Okay. So the reason why it's an expensive program to operate, all their basic needs are taken care of so they wow. can concentrate full time on their career so training. So they've got food and lodging and medical care and everything basic else too? Basic medical care. Oh, wow. Um, all of their uniforms, all of the certifications, which I'll talk more in a, in a little bit, all their certifications, job placement okay. assistance. What are the ages? 16 to 24. 16 to 24. The, wow. Our basic criteria is 16 to 24 from low income backgrounds. And we follow the federal um, lower living standard, the okay. poverty guidelines. So if someone were to qualify for um, welfare, food stamps, um, things like that, they're probably qualified for our program. Okay. So young adults from low-income backgrounds that are in need of either academic and or career and technical training. So how does it um, work with immigrants? 
Do they have to be U.S. citizens in order to do this? or They have to be able to live and reside okay. in Hawaii. So our, our main population is young people from the Hawaiian Islands, and right. we serve all of the outer islands, but also throughout the Pacific. It's part of the compact of the free association. Okay. So basically, uh, um, when the United States needed some of the areas for missile testing years ago, one of the agreements was to train their youth. Oh. So we also work with... Um, Guam, Palau, the Federated States of Micronesia, and the Republic of Marshall Islands. Oh, wow, yes. yeah. That's so big. it's a whole, whole melting pot. So a lot of cultural diversity happening on center. Right. And that's perfect because we're preparing them for the workplace. And here in Hawaii, every workplace has yes. a lot of cultural diversity. Right, exactly. So it's kind of getting them ready. That's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I just love hearing about all of this. So it started, did, was there a specific state it started in after, or was oh, it just a national program? It was a that national started program. Again, it was signed into legislation in 1964. Here in Hawaii, we opened up our first job corps two years later in 1966. Okay. And over the years, we've had sites on Kauai, Big Island. But currently, um, our main campus is here on Oahu. And okay. then we have a satellite campus of Country Maui in Makawao. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's great. I think we've even got some, I think it came on the, the screen here for us too, that so people can see where to get in touch with you. There it is in the Maui Job Corps and then the Oahu one so that people know who to call. And so 16, this is before they even graduate from high school. Not, so do you help with that too? or? Sure. So again, we work with 16 to 24 year olds. People always ask me, what's the typical profile of a Job Corps student? Well, we have from A to Z young people. We yeah. have some um, high school graduates that might not be able, again, we're talking low-income individuals, maybe they might not be able to afford to go on to a Vogue Tech school on their own or college. Right. Job Corps might be the place for them. Sure. They could come in, study one of our nine career pathways. Um, and nine. Nine. Wow. Nine at Waimanalo, and then we have four at our Maui site. So we have high school graduates, and then we have people that maybe have dropped out of high school for right. whatever reason. And then they realize, I can't get any type of job these days without a high school diploma. Right. They could come back. We could help them finish their high school diploma, put them in one of our career pathways. Okay. So we have both. High, we service high school dropouts or high school graduates. Right. I've had students that come in that have started college and for one reason or the other had to drop out. A lot of times it's financially. Right. They come through Job Corps. They could complete one of our pathways. We even have a college program, Cynthia. Oh, wow. So once they finish the basics, they could start their college career while residing on campus, having all their basic needs taken care of while they start their college career. Right now we have 13 students at the Waimanalo site that have finished the basics that are attending either Windward Community College or Kapiolani Community College. Nice. Yes, so they can get a start on their career, uh, their college career, while receiving all the benefits of Job Corps. So they get this vocational thing and they can still work on academics at the same time. Correct. That is amazing. So, so I have a question for you yeah. about um, what's happening with our new, what's his name, Acosta? Isn't he the labor guy? I remember who our new the labor secretary is, but I know they're making lots of changes to all of these kinds of programs. Have you guys been affected by this? We have not. I'm so um, glad. Yes. Well, because year after year, um, as you know, appropriations change. Right. We're we're always at risk of getting on the chopping block. But Job Corps, I'm proud to say, every year uh, we get continued funding, usually at the same or a higher level. But we're accountable. We're accountable to Congress. They right. want to see outcomes. Sure. Like I said, it's an expensive program to operate. Right. So every year when we get continued funding, or we have to this point, they raise the, the bar. They want to see outcomes. How many students actually successfully complete the program? How many of the young people that come in, how many completed their high school diploma? Right. How many completed their career and technical training program? What type of industry recognized certifications are you providing them? Right. And then it doesn't end there. So that's while they're in the program. Once they graduate, our staff are responsible to make sure they do something with the skills, whether it be going to a 
starting that first career, going right into employment, right. continuing on with college. Maybe they want a career in the military. Right. We assist them in preparing them for that. Um, maybe they're interested in apprenticeship. Or they might be interested in going to continuing their Job Corps education at centers on the mainland. At the Hawaii. Oh, they can do that? They can transfer to a different center yes. somewhere? So oh, at, wow. at, at, at Job Corps, in all of our nine different career pathways, they leave with some type of industry-recognized certification that employers are looking for. Wow. Okay? So once they finish the basics, and they don't want to stop there, Cynthia, a lot of times, this is the first time these young people have been successful in a learning environment. Right. So they get all fired up, and they're, they're thriving. They want to excel. Oh. So they can continue on to the mainland and get higher levels of certification. Oh, wow. Okay. When, uh, with everything being provided for them. How wonderful is that? Yes. Even the travel cost, would that be provided also? Everything. Wow. A lot of them choose to come back to Hawaii or the Pacific Islands and, and go to work afterwards. But some choose to stay on the mainland and utilize their skills there. That's remarkable. So it just doesn't stop at the Hawaii Center. There's so many more opportunities. And we're seeing many more students take full advantage of them. Right. Yeah. So how, about how many students do you get like in one program? How many can you guys have at one time? So we have, like I said, nine different career pathways. And um, usually 20 to 25 in each because everyone has a different schedule, Cynthia. I might come in and need to work on my high school diploma sure. and one of my, my career choices. Right. So I might be half-time education, half-time in my career. You might okay. come in as a high school graduate. You could go right into, let's say, culinary arts, for example, and finish that in eight to ten months. Wow, that's and then, fast. That's again, amazing. Maybe go to the mainland. Maybe continue on with college. There's right. so many, so many opportunities. Wow. Listen, I know we've got a little video that um, I'd like to play. So let's let's watch this little video that you brought for us. I think it's a really good one. Let's watch that video now. We all have dreams, big dreams, of who we know we want to be, of what we know we can do. There's a way to get there. But the price of admission isn't money. It's the desire to succeed. Success takes skill. Skill takes training. Training takes work. If you're ready to learn, train, and work, Job Corps is ready for you. These Job Corps students can tell you it's real. Job Corps. Careers begin here. Aloha, my name is Victoria and I'm a host at the Adventures in Small Business. This is a collaboration between U.S. Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office, and its partners, where we showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses, talk about how to start a business, talk about great tips for small business owners. Uh, please join us every Thursday, 11 a.m. at Think Tech Hawaii. Um, see you soon. Mahalo. Aloha, this is Rob Hack. My show is Exporting from Hawaii every other Thursday from 12 to 12.30 p.m. where I bring in people involved in the entire exporting infrastructure in Hawaii, including government, academia, and manufacturers and shippers themselves. Please join me every other Thursday, 12 to 12.30 p.m. on Exporting from Hawaii. Mahalo. Welcome back to Finding Respect in the Chaos here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm here with Julie Dugan from Job Corps, and this is some really important stuff for everybody out there, so I'm glad you stayed with us. So, Julie, I know you want to tell us more about the actual sites, and I know everybody needs to hear it, too, so give us some more information, specific information. Now. Sure. Like I said, currently we have two centers or two campuses. Our main campus is um, on Oahu in Waimanalo. Okay. Beautiful view of the Ko'olau Mountain Range, Ooh. where we have room in our dormitories for a little over 200 students, 211 to be an exact. 200 people? Well, I had no idea that it was that big. In beautiful open air dormitories. Oh, and wow. then we usually have at any given time about 15 students, for whatever reason, decide to commute each day. Okay. And a lot of those are young parents. 
And so, oh, right. So they need to go home for their kids. Correct. Right. Oh, okay. And when we were over at, we've been in our current location for 26 years. 26 years. That's awesome. We were over at Cocoa Head before for many years, and young people that had children, unless they had childcare, they couldn't participate in our program. Oh, right. So when we built to the Waimanalo site, we incorporated a child care center. So those young awesome. mothers and fathers that need child care can come study. They know that their, oh. their KK are being taken care of. They're at the center. They can concentrate full time on their career and technical training. And how important is that for young parents to be able to have a career so they can provide for their kids? Correct. That is so amazing. And you know, all the money that you say, it's a very expensive program, but these people, if they were just out with no job or, you know, um, just crummy job because they don't have any kind of training, can't really support their families. So they're using welfare, they're using food stamps. So we're saving money and all of that too with some of the social programs by giving them these certifications. Exactly. And the, the studies, uh, they don't have a recent study, but I, I still believe it, it uh, holds firm is that for every dollar invested in a Job Corps student, the return is a little over $2 because, again, these uh -huh. are young people from low income backgrounds, right. many of them on welfare, different social service right. roles. Um, and our job is to give them the skills to become tax paying citizens employed, paying into the tax base. Right. And I think that's one of the reasons why each year we get continued funding. Right, sure, it works. why not? It works. Because you're making a difference. Exactly. And that's so important. And it's a financial difference also. It's not just a um, social difference. Correct. Because it is a big social difference too, because you're making a huge social impact for these people. Right. And for the greater community around them too. Yeah. And they don't just go into entry level entry level, you know, fast food jobs afterwards. So at our Waimanalo site, we have nine different career pathways. Um, we have a nurse assistant program. That's Certified huge. nurse assistant. There's a huge need in the medical field. Right so, now there is here, especially in Hawaii, because we have an aging generation that's just needing that help and wants to stay in their own homes, but can't unless they have a nurse's aide that can come and help them. Exactly. So, so that's a huge need. Here. In that program, they come in, they get the, the classroom instruction, they get the hands-on internships at different facilities. We pay for the certification, which I, I think is up, almost up to $500 these wow. days. So they leave as a certified nurse assistant. That's big. Everything taken care of. Another trade we have that's in high demand that we just um, established maybe three years ago is a security and protective services trade. So the state of Hawaii went to um, a requirement of every security guard in every facility needs to hold what they call a guard card. Oh, right, right, right. I've heard of that. And so Job Corps already had an established program. So we oh. established that at the center. And Cynthia, we can't produce the security guards fast enough for the employers. Wow. So they leave there in good paying jobs, certifications. Some of the other ones we have is a medical office support. So in every office you have a medical administrative assistant. Sure. We train for that. Nice. We train, There's good money in that. Yes. We wow. train um, in con the construction trade. So building and construction technologies. Oh, and that's big here too because of all the remodels and all yes. that. Wow. Industrial painting. Ooh, that's especially yes. huge. Everybody has to paint their house every couple of years here. Landscaping. Ah, oh, that's another all huge one. These are all really important, um, not just important, but very specific things that are needed here. So they're not just these like random jobs that and they can't get here anyway. These are really important jobs here. Well, so we have the last two trades I wanted to, to tell our viewers and you about is we have an automotive uh, trade. Oh, that's big. And too. culinary arts. Another big one. Wow. Exactly. And then you see something about a new one with hotels or something that's going to start? That's going to be at our Maui site. So oh, at our okay. Maui site, we currently have four trades. We have culinary arts, the building and construction technologies, right. office administration, which we also have at Waimanalo. Um, but we're expanding our retail trade. We had a retail trade, but that kind of pigeonholed them into, you know, just retail sales. Now retail, like going to work at Ross or Correct. going to work at Macy's, Correct. doing that kind of retail. Oh, our okay. employers um, across the island said, there's a need for hotel, hospitality, hotel and lodging. So we're talking about jobs, front desk,
front oh, office. That's everything here. I mean, think of Waikiki. Uh, it's just massive hotels. The housekeeping. Good paying jobs. Yes. A lot of them union jobs. Now, especially after the big um, strike that we had, excuse me, the big strike that we had downtown. Correct. Um, so now everybody's getting a much better, Correct. much better benefits, much better pay, all of that. So yeah. that's a real important thing. So we're just establishing that at our Maui site, but you don't have to you don't have to be a young person living on Maui. Anyone can attend either site. It depends on my interest in the career trades. So if I came in and I live here on Oahu yes. and I wanted to do that trade, I wanted to go into the hospitality hotel trade. Would you fly me to Maui? Correct. To go to the classes? Correct. Oh, wow. So it doesn't matter if they don't, if they're not on that island, they can still get there. No, we want to make sure we're meeting their uh, career goals. So if I'm interested in the hospitality and lodging, I would go over to the Maui site. Okay. Again, it's a little bit smaller. There's 128 students that live in the dorms there. A beautiful upcountry Makawao. Oh, wow. So both are, are pristine campuses. Nice. Um, so both sites, and we're definitely promoting the new trade that's just opening up on Maui. Okay, now you have tours. You said something about having a tour. Dan. We have tours every Thursday. At Waimanalo, wow. we have tours every Thursday at 9. So if you're a young person, a young person's family members, school counselors, anyone that might want to find out more, Every Thursday at 9 o'clock, you can give us a call because we'd like to know in advance so we can be ready. And at the Maui site, every Thursday at 10 o'clock. Okay. So yeah. people, you can go out and you can see what's happening. You can see what we're talking about with your own eyes. So if you've got one of your kids or if you're, you know, between 18, 16, sorry, 16 and 24, you have a chance to do this too. And so tell us a little bit more about what the application process is. Sure. Again, the basic qualifications are age and income level okay. and the need for academic and career training. Okay. So first step is to come, take a tour, see what we have to offer. Okay. Because sometimes we might have overzealous parents that think their, their, their young child or their young adult needs the program. We have to have the buy-in of the applicant. Right. So and the kid they, has to be the one that wants to do this. Right. right. And on those tours, they're able to hear from young people that are currently in the program. Oh, so they're great. just not hearing from the instructors or myself and what a fabulous program it is. <laughs> they're hearing from other young people. And that, I think, would be everything to powerful. have. Powerful. Yeah, very powerful. Very powerful. compelling for them to hear it from someone else. Sure. So they come and take the tour. If they want to proceed with the application process, like I said, it is a federal program. So there's a lot of checks and balances. Sure. We have to make sure that they are. So age, income, we take care of basically the whole individual. So all their basic medical, dental, um, any special needs they have are taken wow. care of. So we need to know about the whole individual. Right. So we need school records. We need immunization shots. Right. If I have any special special medical needs, then we might ask for more information from your doctor. Right. Or dyslexia or something like that in there. You can, Correct. You can help we want to make sure we can service the young individual. Right. Safety is key. We, right. we have 200 individuals living and working seven days a week. That's huge. So safety is huge. So we do have to run uh, background checks. Just like on, Absolutely, of course you would. Just like on any job, you sure. run a background check. Um, we also uh, run uh, drug screens because these right. days everyone you have to have to know drug if they're on drugs anyway. Yeah. So we need to know that they've had clear background um, checks and that they're not using any type of drugs because we have zero tolerance for Good. drugs, alcohol, and violence. That's the way it should be. Yes, exactly. Right. I think we've got some. Uh, uh, some graphics that we can show too, right? About sure. it, yeah, like this one well, here that kind of shows yeah, a little bit about what we're talking about. Yeah, this one shows that we have immediate openings. You know, we are one of 126 uh, job course centers across the nation. Wow, that's a lot. Yes. We, again, we serve a 16 to 24 year old. Our job core tags. Look, you can train, live, learn, and connect. And our tagline: oh. Careers begin here. Right. Right. Sure, and they do. You know, I know a. Um, I have a story a little bit about Job Corps. I had a, when I was the children's minister working with kids for about six years in mm -hmm. inner city Mobile, Alabama. And there was this one girl and she went, she went all the way through high school, which was just a miracle for where she grew up. 
um, rising up ab above the fray, so to speak. Um, and then she went actually to a trade school to learn to be a massage therapist, but couldn't get any jobs or anything else. She was still the right age, so she applied to Job Corps, went to Kentucky to Job Corps, and then came back with all these degrees and certifications and went to work with the kids in the neighborhood where she grew up, helping the kids. So she like went all the way through, and it was partly Job Corps that helped her learn how to give back. And I thought that was just such an amazing story. She went back to her home She area. went back to her home neighborhood of inner city, um, very low income, uh, predominantly black, um, just amazing girl, just amazing girl. And so what Job Corps did for her was such, it, it was a real big turnaround for her. It was really great. I was so proud of her. Nice. Well, um, we definitely believe in our graduates. Um, and currently, I believe we have 12 graduates that we have employed that are, are full-time staff members. They came back and worked for yes. Job Corps. Now, you have openings for Job Corps. So what is, we only have a few minutes left, but um, tell us how somebody could go and apply if they wanted to. Sure. Um, they can go to our website at mtctrains.com, or they can contact me di directly. And I think we've got a, there you go right there. We there. Go. Contact her directly. Contact me d directly. Uh, it's a great place to work. You wake up every morning with a purpose, a fabulous yeah. mission, um, great staff. And I can say that a lot of our staff have been with us for many years. They're dedicated, enthusiastic, Aww. and they care about every young person that right. walks through the door to help them meet their career goals. They're going to make me cry. Well, <laughs> it's so important that it's, that's, I think and everybody young, should be touched by And the their young story. people feel that. They come yeah. from a variety of backgrounds. They might not have had the support. Okay. So our staff not only act as academic instructors, career instructors, but mentors, right. friends, aunties, uncles. That's so important. Thank you so much for coming, Julie. I really appreciate you coming and sharing all this important information with us. Um, I know we're just about out of time, but I want to thank everybody for joining us today here on Finding Respect in the Chaos. I'm Cynthia Sinclair, and this is Think Tech Hawaii. Please come back and join me week after next at 12 o'clock right here. Thank you.